Great. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Uh, so indeed, I'm the director of solution architecture at Tengen, which essentially means that I'm the one who goes to you prospects and customers to explain to you how to leverage the technology. And in that, uh, in that respect, I am very glad to be able to tell you about the aggregation framework, because I think it is a major, a major improvement and an incredible feature that we're adding to this version. What is it answering? They, a very common, a very common um, question that we were asked by customers was, do I really need to write MapReduce code to do an average group buy? I come from the data analysis world, and uh, this an average group buy and SQL was sort of my bread and butter. Others come from the programming world, and they were also able to do incredible things very fast with this. And MapReduce was not necessarily the most intuitive framework or mindset to be able to compute just meta views of the data. And this question was really asking a, uh, a very important question. We accumulate data. We encourage you to accumulate massive amounts, big data, in MongoDB. And that's fine as far as the application is concerned. But then when you want to sort of understand this data, and you want to do some analysis, and you want to understand what is there, you want to keep track of it, are things going fine? Are, you, know, you, you want to have a dashboard. You want to build reports on this. You want to have tools that allow you to do this quickly. And in particular, you want to have tools that allow you to have a conversation with the data. Because invariably, when you ask a question to the data, as soon as you get the reply, only more questions come up. So you have to be able to react very quickly and change that, uh, that code easily. Until the aggregation framework, you had two options for this. right? You had the MapReduce framework, which is essentially something in working on the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript engine on top of MapReduce. And this was to, you know, you, you could write much simpler MapReduce code in JavaScript functions to basically ask these questions. And if you had really massive works that could do social network analysis, sentiment analysis, these kinds of you know, deep analysis, then we had basically the, we still have, the Hadoop connector to offer where you, know, you could send the data to a Hadoop cluster, and you, had, you, know, you could point the input source to, to Hadoop and the output uh, to Mongo, sorry, and the output source back to Mongo. Now, to explain to you the point of the aggregation framework and why we think it's this, you know, a, a very important tool to the toolkit of analysis and analytics that, uh, that Mongo provides, let me give you an example. Let's say that we have, you know, this is going to be simple documents for this example, but we have some sort of blogging application, right? Where you have documents that have, you know, in each document you have an author, you have a post, and you have tags to describe the post. And you have something perhaps to describe, you know, the number of views of this post and whether this user is active. So you have example documents on the left here. And I want to do something very simple, which is I want to see how many views and how many posts there are per author, right? If I was to write this in SQL, it would be what's on the top of the second column here. It would be a simple select, count sum from with a group by author. With the aggregation framework, it's going to look very similar. It's going to be the, a call to the aggregate function, which says, OK, group by author. And I want you to sum every document you find, sum one. And I want you to sum the views in, and aggregate this into view count. So this is to show you that, essentially, if you come from an SQL-like background, the aggregation framework is something you should be able to learn in 10 to 15 minutes, because there's a very similar mindset. Additionally, you can do things that are more complicated. Uh, and we believe that really extend what the uh, what SQL-like capacity allows you to do. Because this is also taking the, um, taking the idea of the pipeline from Unix, if you come from the uh, programming background, where essentially we have seven operators that I'm going to explain briefly. And each operator takes data in, operates on the data, and basically takes data out and hands it over to the next operator. So you can introduce the sequence of operation that you choose to operate on the data in this pipeline fashion. So suppose you want to do something that is a bit more complex, 
which is pivoting the data, right? Right now, the documents are from this author perspective. Each document is you have an author on a post, and you have multiple tags for each post. Now, what, you, what I want to see is something which is on a tag basis. I want to understand for each tag how many posts there are. I want to see the array of authors that, are, that uh, have contributed to this tag, and I want to see how many views overall there has been of a post containing this tag. So it's like reversing the structure of the documents, right? This is going to be a non-trivial a non operation. So let me tell you the operators that we have available to us to do this. The first is match. Match is essentially something that selects the data set, right? You have this massive amount of data set. You probably not all of it is relevant. So it allows you to put a query operator to select what is relevant. Project is to select what you're going to see. Sometimes in a document, it's, in a document can be massive, and what you want to see is perhaps only two or three fields. Project is going to select what you're going to uh, see out of the result. Unwind is how we deal with arrays, right? Unwind is you want to say if I want to if I'm going to aggregate over tags, at some point I'm going to have to basically turn this array structure containing the tags into something that is normalized. So if I unwind the tags array, it's going to create. Instead of having one document with three entries, I'm going to have three documents with one entry each time. And this will allow me to have a predictable structure to aggregate over. Group by is the key operator to aggregate things. This is what we'll say, you know, basically use sums and counts and averages and minimum and maximum over this unit of analysis, whether it's authors, whether it's tags, whether it's uh, Area, region, it could be product if you're in another, if you're in retail, it could be you know, client, whatever it is. And then you have things like sort and limit to basically allow you to say, I want to see you know, the most important one and I want to see the top 10. So the result I want to see is something like what is on the right, where I have the IDs, each tag, and the authors is going to be the array of authors that have contributed to this tag, and then basically counting operators. And the way to do that is the code that you see in the middle here. So I'm essentially, the first operator is matching, which is selecting only the post where the user is active. So that's my first, the, my first where clause, basically. Projecting is selecting the part of the document that is only relevant to us, in this case, author, tags, and views. And then I'm unwinding the tags array. So I, have, you know, I had an author and several tags, and now I'm going to have basically each document that it's going to analyze over will have one author, one tag. So in the case of this first document that had you know, me as an author with three tags, now I'm going to have three documents with me as an author and one tag each. And I'm explaining how I want to aggregate. And this is something that is very powerful relative to, say, a relational, uh, a relational setting, where I can add to set the author. Right? What would be easy in a relational setting would be to aggregate that, count the authors, do something like this. But here, add to set means that the result is going to be this array. So I can introduce a complex document structure there. And add to set means that it's not going to repeat the same author twice, obviously. And that's the powerful thing. You can imagine that in this sort of application, you can have you know, a, tens of thousands of posts, and maybe only 20 authors contributed to this. And I don't want an array of 10,000. I just want the array of the distinct authors. And then sum one is to basically count the posts. And then sum the views is to basically sum all the views that were on this thing. Match, this is where I'm using the second match. I'm leveraging the fact that this is a sequence framework, right? So I know that the match here is working on the result of the group by. So match here is basically saying, on this result, I'm only interested in the tags that have had a significant number of views. So forget about those that had fewer than 10 views. This is where I can cut some of the data set off. And then I'm sorting because I want to see the maximum one first. And then just for the exercise, I'm saying limit two. So basically, show me the top two. And then the result is what you see on the right. This should give you an example, an overview of how to use these operators to do simple things, like I showed you with 
you know, uh, summing the views over, over the tags, and more complex, perhaps less uh, predictable things, like pivoting uh, a document structure. The last thing I'd like to say about uh, the aggregation framework, before I hand it back to Dwight, is a very important thing about data analysis is to feel safe as an analyst. But part of uh, my career, I was a data analyst, and which means you, you know, I would work on massive amounts of data to, do, you know, to understand basically what kinds of products, what kinds of attitudes were relevant to, uh, to particular customers. And when I worked on this data, I would invariably you know, have my conversation, I would, have, I would do these massive queries, get replies, and then I would realize it's not exactly what I wanted, I would try to send it again, and then there would be all kinds of mistakes all the time. Every hour I would make a mistake, and what usually that mistake meant is that the query was 100 times more massive and demanding than it should have been. And it, that means if this query was going to interfere with the operational workload, right? If this query was going to have an impact on people who were doing quote unquote real work, um, I was going to be in real trouble. So it was critical for my work to feel that whatever I was doing was protected, was separate from whatever else was happening on the data. I had to feel safe in the right to experiment and make errors. With the aggregation framework, you can actually separate this work. You can basically have the primary in a replica set handling the operational load, and you can have the analyst working with the analytical load, working on a secondary, on a completely separate node. And these two workloads are going to work on different nodes and are not going to interfere with each other. And when there is a spike on the primary, that's fine. It's not going to change the analytical query. And when there is, you know, an analyst like me making a big mistake, it's going to happen on the secondary and it's not going to have no impact on what's happening with the application load on the primary. So it allows you, I want to stress that this is a really useful and production ready tool that can be used on, on real production deployments because it leaves your data and your application safe. Thank you for listening to this. I hope you're going to download version 2.2 uh, as soon as this is done and that you're going to try the aggregation framework because at least I find it very exciting. But of course, you know, I'm a little biased. And meanwhile, I'm going to hand it over back to Dwight who's going to explain to us the massive improvements of concurrency in this new version. Dwight, please come back on the air. Thank you.